Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I wanted to get on this morning and talk a little bit about uh, the 4.6 liter V8 as compared to the 5.7 liter V8. You know, when I went to look at this truck here, I actually drove both. I drove a 4.6 liter two wheel drive and I drove a 5.7 liter four wheel drive. So maybe not quite apples to apples because obviously the 5.7 four wheel drive was gonna be a little bit heavier than the 4.6, but nonetheless. The first thing that I wanna talk about is horsepower. The 4.6 liter has 310 horsepower at 5,600 RPM. And the 5.7 has 381 at 5,600 RPM. Now, of course, that's a 71 horse difference. I gotta say, I really didn't notice the difference, at least from takeoff. Um, they felt pretty much the same to me. The 4.6 had plenty of get up and go. The only time I noticed a difference was when I was getting on the freeway and it was kind of a, a steeper grade, if you will. And when I punched the 5.7 getting on the freeway, you did notice a bit more oomph than you had in the 4.6. Not a ton, but definitely noticeable. As far as torque goes, the 4.6 liter has 327 pound-feet of torque at 3,400 RPM. And the, four, or the, uh, the 5.7 liter has 401 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM. Now, torque, I think, is, is the key. You know, torque is the, is the guts when you take off, you know? And again, except for on the freeway, and that was already at speed, I didn't notice any difference. If, if anything, I would say the 4.6 probably felt a little bit quicker, maybe a little bit more responsive. Again, it was the two-wheel drive as compared to the 5.7.4, um, but it just felt more responsive to me. You know, when I took off, I actually spun the rear tires in the 4.6. Now, I wasn't trying to. I was just driving normally like I usually do, but I actually spun the tires. It was pretty cool. Um, and looking at the two, of course, you got to look at weight. You know, what are the weight differences? Obviously, the heavier the vehicle is, the more power it's going to take to move it. Um, the 4.6 liter that I drove, the double cab, um, is 5,100 pounds. That's the curb weight on the 4.2, or I'm sorry, on the 4.6 liter, uh, 4 by 2. The double cab 4.4 liter, or 4.4, or 4 by 4, I should say, geez, 4 by 4, and this is again the 4.6 liter, uh, was 5,400 pounds. So about 300 pounds heavier if you go with a 4 by 4 in the 4 by, or the, uh, the double cab. Now, if you go with the 5.7 liter, the double cab 4.2 is 5,170 pounds. So you only pick up 70 pounds by going with the, the bigger motor in the 4x2 double cab. On the double cab 4x4 in the 5.7 liter, you're looking at 5,470 pounds. So about, you know, 370 pounds heavier um, in the one that I drove as compared to the 4x2 double cab. So it was heavier, but it did have that bigger motor. Uh, payload and looking at the 4x2 as compared to the 4x4, um, and this is regardless of the motor. The payload in the 4x2 double cab is rated at 1,600 to 1,730 pounds. If you go to the 4x4 double cab, you actually lose a little bit because it's heavier. It's rated at 1,490 to 1,630 pounds. So I guess I'd say if payload is a consideration when you're looking at, you know, a 4x2 versus a 4x4, the 4x2 is going to haul more. Now, everybody wants to talk about towing. I don't do any towing myself, but I know there's a lot of folks out there that do tow. So the 4x2 double cab is rated at 10,200 pounds. The 4x4 double cab, again, we go down because you've got more weight in the motor, um, is 9,900 pounds. So you actually can tow less uh, by going to the 4x4, at least in the double cab. Now, I, I will note here, for all you 4x4 guys out there, the 4x4 Crew Max is 9,800 pounds. It's rated at 9,800 pounds. 
So it's below, obviously, the 4x2 double cab and the 4x4 double cab. So you can tow more if you go with a 4x2 as well. Um, one thing I'll say about the 4.6 or the 4.6 liter motor, um, it's not available uh, in the limited trim and above. So you can only go SR5 and below to actually get the 4.6 liter motor. So if you're looking for more luxury, you're going to be at a, a 5.7 liter V8. Fuel mileage. The elephant in the room that nobody ever wants to talk about, but everybody does want to talk about. Uh, the 4.6 liter V8 4x2 is rated at 15 city, 19 highway, and 16 combined. The 4x4 4.6 liter V8 is 14 city, 18 highway, and uh, 16 combined. Not too bad. Relatively close. And all of these are relatively close. They're not hugely different. The 5.7 liter V8. In a 4x2, it's rated at 13 city, 18 highway, and 15 combined. In a 4x4, it's rated at 13 city, 17 highway, and 15 combined. Again, these numbers aren't hugely different. And I would say that if you're, you know, really sensitive to fuel economy, it's probably not the truck for you, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, the Tundra is a little bit behind when we start talking about fuel economy. So they do need to step up their game a bit there, obviously. Um, let's talk about pricing a little bit here. And this is just base. This is, uh, this is the starting number for pricing based upon what trim or what uh, level you're looking at. But on the SR5, uh, 4x2, and this is with the 4.6 liter engine, it starts at 33320 On the SR5 4x2 with the 5.7 liter motor, it starts at $35,115. And that's, that's an increase of $1,795. Not huge when you're talking tens of thousands of dollars, but it is more. And just for kicks, I threw in an SR5 uh, 4x4, uh, five, and this is the 5.7 uh, liter engine. It starts at $41,375. So to go to the 4x4 5.3 liter V8, you're going to spend, starting out, before you add any options or packages or anything else, an extra $8,055. Now, that's comparing it to the 4x2, 4 point liter, or 4.6 liter V8. Now, the question always arises, you know, and it, and it did for me, was it worth an extra $8,055 to pick up what 71 horsepower um and uh the difference between what 327 and 401 uh or 401 pound feet of torque uh it wasn't for me especially and, and really it comes down to how the vehicle feels you know what is it when you get in it you know, I've always talked about, I don't, I never want a vehicle that feels sluggish or slow. You know, I had plenty of those in years past. I never want one of those again. They're simply not fun to drive. So for me, when I test drove both of these, given all the numbers and everything else I showed you, um, it really came down to how it, it felt. You know, how did they handle the power in that truck? How did that truck handle the power? You know, it's lighter. In some cases, it's, it's not a ton lighter, uh, but it is lighter. Uh, and how did it how did it feel on the road? It, the 4.6 was awesome. I mean, when I drove the two, except for that little, you know, inclining freeway entry, um, it felt way way better to me. Uh, more responsive. It felt quicker off the line. Like I mentioned, I even was able unintentionally to spin the tires off the line. Uh, it just felt better to me, and I didn't really want a four-wheel drive anyway. So if I'd have gone to the 5.7, at least for what was available for me that day on that lot, 
I would have had to go four wheel drive. And I didn't see any reason to spend that extra eight grand plus because of course you've got other packages and all the other stuff that adds money uh, to the truck. I was very happy and I still am very happy with the 4.6 liter motor. I think it's awesome. Anyway, something for you to consider if you're in the market, if you're out there looking around, if you're looking at a Tundra, drive both. See what you think. I bet you'll be impressed. As usual, appreciate you guys watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Click that subscribe button if you haven't before. And we'll see you next time on the web. Have a good day. Bye.